Hi, I'm Kevin, and welcome to my podcast, Finding My Freedom, where we talk about what inspires us, what gets us up in the morning, and how it has led us to live the life we've lived. So if that's something that uh, interests you, then stick around and, uh, and have a listen. Thank you. What do you think of when somebody says that person's real creative or they have an artist mind or wow, that's uh, really great ideas? Usually, I would bet it would be um, you think of uh, somebody who paints, somebody who sculpts, maybe somebody who plays music, somebody who draws. But we don't think of creativity in the everyday sense, in which there is a lot, a lot of creativity and a lot of people doing creative things and not even realizing it. I like to think of uh, creativity as problem solving. There's definitely a part of it that's, you know, you, you have an issue and you got to think about how to fix it or overcome it and um, sometimes you just think outside the box and that is a very creative idea you know three people really come to mind when I think of creativity in this way Henry Ford Thomas Edison and Nikolai Tesla they all had a, an idea they had a problem that they were trying to solve and there had never been anything like it in the world before them so they were on their own trying to figure it all out right those ideas that they came up with to develop their product or their invention or whatever you call it is absolutely creative they had to think outside the box they had to figure things out on their own and they had trial and error a bunch of trial and error and you know they just uh, figured it out and what prompted me to record this episode was I was talking to a friend of mine and I had said something about uh, being creative and she was like well you know um, I don't paint or draw or play music or anything like that I'm not very creative but what she does do is play a video game and the problem solving that she does inside there is really incredible and that's creativity you know that is uh, being inspired to act on an issue or a, or a problem or an idea So I just thought maybe it would be kind of cool to talk about where my creativity comes from and uh, how I see a creative person. So I would consider myself a creative or a creative person. I live for coming up with new ideas and acting on inspiration. I'm not afraid to take chances and try, and if it fails, well then we just have to try again. Try it from a different angle, think about it, or sleep on it, or however you decide to get your answers and hopefully you eventually fix the problem or, you know, that idea that you came up with shows up in the 3D world and you just made something really cool. (laughs) So where does the idea come from? Well, that part, I don't really even want to know the answer because I feel like it's magic. It doesn't matter if it's uh, something, a word somebody says or a dream you had or seeing something on the ground or whatever it is that that sparked that idea that to me is magic 
Some would say you get the ideas from spirit that you're co-creating with your higher self or the universe. Or they would consider it channeling that they're being directly guided by spirit. And I would absolutely agree with that 100%. Others say they get inspired by God and how he talks to them. And I would definitely agree with that too. Because these ideas, we don't really know exactly where they come from, but they do come. And it is so much fun when we get them. There was a saying that I heard a lot when I was a kid. <laughs> you know, there's, um, it was like they would separate you into two different kinds of people. You know, the book smart people and the people that were good with their hands. And I was always good with my hands. But you know, I never thought of myself as actually being smart because the smart people were over there, you know what I mean? And the people that worked with their hands were over here. But it goes both ways. You're using both sides all the time. Analytical side of things, people get the ideas and they act on them. It might be a little more linear, a little more step involved, not so chaotic as say a creative, somebody that's good with their hands may just want to start making stuff and fixing it as they go along. But it, it's both ways, it goes both ways. So there's no one smarter than the other, no one way that's more right than the other. It just is what it is. However you get inspired by your ideas is completely your own process. And no one way is right or wrong, it just is the process. So growing up, I always thought that, you know, everybody kind of thought of it this way, that, you know, it's just fun, you know what I mean? Like, it's fun to make stuff. I just love to make stuff. And it doesn't matter if it's with wood, or if it's on paper, or if it's changing the vibration in the air to make music. It's all the same to me. Sometimes it's a problem we have to fix. Sometimes it's an idea we want to execute. Any way you look at it, creativity is all around us, all the time. So when I was a young adult, I think about 18 or so, I had a girlfriend whose dad was a painter. And I don't mean like a Picasso type painter, I just mean a house painter. <laughs> and he offered me a job and I took it. I really enjoyed the idea that, you know, it wasn't like so much work to me. Yes, it's hard work, and yes, you sweat, and yes, you, you use your body and all that, but you also get a project, or you have to have an end result. You know, like, you're actually making something. Not just making a part for something, or, you know, killing time to, uh get that paycheck and for me it was um, just about the only other way that I could actually do some kind of a job besides music because it didn't seem so much like work it seemed more like I was creating something and this was all unconscious I just gravitated toward things that I liked or that I could tolerate <laughs> so like I said before with my process, a lot of it's dreams. It's happened to me ever since I was a kid. I would uh, find the issue that I had and sleep on it or just let it soak in a little bit and I would wake up with an idea or wake up with a problem, the solution, you know, all the time. And one of the first times where I recognized that my dreams were bringing me something was um, when I was learning how to play songs by ear. I had a guitar teacher that uh, got me started on the song and then gave me a little portion of it to learn on my own. And 
and uh, play with him next week and make sure that I got it right or wrong and um, it, it develops your ear. It really helps with uh, your phrasing, your ear training. All in all, it's just a great thing. Especially, you know, you always hear people say, I like to play along with a record and that's part of it, you know. Because when you're doing that, you actually feel like you're part of the band, you know. So anyway, I was uh, stuck on this part and I could not figure it out. And I was trying everything. And finally I got a little bit frustrated with it and I put it down. And I don't know if I took a nap or if I just fell asleep that night. But I had a dream. I had a dream and I saw my hands making the chord that I needed. And I woke up and I thought, wow, let me try that. And I tried it and it got me closer. It got me closer and closer and closer to where I was looking for the right note for. And actually, I thought I was like really weird for that. I thought, man, that's kind of crazy. How could I see that in my dreams, you know? And so I didn't really talk about it at all, at all. You know, I really kept it in. But looking back on it now, it was definitely spirit, my higher power, whatever you want to call it. I just call it uh, communicating with the universe. same thing would happen when I was working in the trades. I would have something that really stumped me or an issue with something and sleep on it and wake up with an idea or have a dream about an idea. I used to talk in my sleep a lot too and so uh, I had people tell me, you know, you were building a house in your sleep when I was working as a uh, framer or um, my mom said that she used to be able to get answers from me <laughs> that she wanted what she had to do was ask a question and I would tell her <laughs> in my sleep <laughs> but I would have no recollection of it so the universe was definitely connecting with me in my dreams I just never recognized it as a gift I recognized it as uh, I was a little cuckoo Maybe uh, a lot weird, and nobody needed to know. <laughs> Some of the most brilliant minds I've ever been around has been working in construction. We don't think about it the same way they used to, you know. They used to consider builders a very integral part of the community, and they were highly respected. It ain't so much that way now. A lot of people think, uh, well, they're just making fast money, and they don't have to go to school, and so it's a quick, easy shortcut to uh, make a living. In which I can tell you that I have met some brilliant, brilliant people through work. Guys that make their own tools. They modify their own tools for an issue. They uh, come up with ingenious ways to fix a problem that uh, nobody's fixed yet. And then they just go on about their business like it's no big deal. You know, just absolutely brilliant. And I've come across the same type of people um, playing music. When I would play the open mic shows on Saturday afternoons when I was on the road, people would just come out of the woodwork, you know, from small towns from all around out in the, the Midwest and uh, come play and just be phenomenal players, like phenomenal players. And then just, you know, have a beer and go back home and be with their family and uh, wait for the next one to come around. 
a lot of the guys I met in the trades played music. As a matter of fact, one of my friends that uh, is a brilliant carpenter, he was about 10 years older than me, and uh, we used to get together and play every Wednesday we'd play. Uh, we'd drink whiskey or beer or whatever and just play some blues and have some fun and just just, just have, some, have a good time with it. And he was like one person that I felt encouraged by sticking with the trades in a way, you know, because it was like, well, if nothing else happens, I can at least do this and at least, you know, be all right with it. So I stuck with it the best I could. And it was in between playing music and the trades, which I built my life on when I was playing more full time. I was working less and when I was able to have a week or two off I would find a job somewhere and go to work and for me I just felt like I needed both both sides you know like when I was playing full-time and just playing I really missed the uh, work side of things and then when I was working full-time and not playing I really missed the playing side of things and you know we're always taught you can only do one thing you're only going to be good at one thing you have to quit everything else and just focus on that one thing and which yeah I, I agree there's a there's a point where we have to live in it we have to eat breathe and sleep it but it doesn't mean we can't learn something else it doesn't mean we can't act on our other inspiration our other creative ideas it doesn't mean that at all it might take somebody a little bit longer to say become a master at their trade because they're spread out a little bit but we all do not have that one track mind where it's like uh, you know you have to do things in a linear fashion where it's step by step by step it's more circular more cyclical you know where it's like you go come around the corner I mean you do you gotta modify your approach and then you go farther down the road and then feel like you come back around and then you got to modify your approach again but it all has to do with how you're inspired by your creative ideas another thing that used to happen to me when I was a kid um, talking about uh, these ideas as I was getting more serious about playing music, I would literally wake up with songs running through my head every single day. Like this never stopped. It never ever stopped. Every day I would wake up with a song in my head or something like that. And I really thought there was something wrong with me. I thought maybe I had OCD or something, you know, that I couldn't stop thinking about this stuff. Now I realize it was the universe communicating with me all the time and I was just an open channel for it, you know. Up until this new process started when I was 47, I thought there was something wrong with me and I needed to shut it down. But I finally realized at 47 years old that uh, it was a gift, that it was my way of the universe communicating with me. After learning a little bit about people who channel and how people have uh, psychic experiences, I started realizing that it wasn't OCD, that it wasn't something wrong with me, and that I needed to learn how to embrace it. So what I started doing was um, I started uh, sharing my morning inspiration on my Facebook page. It wasn't nothing too incredibly wild you know I just I would wake up with a song in my head and I would post it on Facebook you know just like with a caption of like uh, some kind of uh, emoji of feeling emoji that way people could use it for their own experience you know? I would always make sure it was a live performance that I could find 
it started working where I, I would wake up in the morning and share that and then the song would go away and then that morphed into another idea I had which which was uh, I had quit smoking and one of the things I missed the most was my morning cigarette well rather than smoke I would just pick up my guitar and practice a little bit and learn the song that I had in my head. It didn't matter what it was. I, it didn't matter if it was a jazz tune or a Weird Al Yankovic tune. It didn't matter. I would just try to figure out, you know, I would just learn it. And some of them I kept in my repertoire and some of them I didn't. But I could share the tune. Not necessarily me playing it all the time, but sometimes I would. Another way I get ideas is through meditation. I got the idea to build my electric guitar, my student electric guitar, um, through this idea. I like to burn a candle, and so when I came back from my meditation, I opened my eyes and I saw this candle, and I thought, man, that's got to be a great guitar. So I kept that idea until I was able to execute it. I carried the candle around with me for about a year. And when I went into uh, Lutheran school, I already had that idea of the colors that I wanted in my head and in the candle before I even went there, you know? So luckily the top ended up being a piece of walnut, which was brilliant for the colors. The colors just, uh, complement each other in a very very unique way and I just love it all from a candle <laughs> and when I get an idea like that I know it's not just me it's co-creating with the universe or my version of it and it makes me want to execute the idea even more because I know it didn't just come from me it came from somewhere way higher up and I feel I have a responsibility to complete the idea at that point. Now this might sound a little abstract, but there's one thing I used to love about drywall repairs, which was how do you make it look like it was never there? How do you get that hole fixed like nobody ever saw it, you know? People could walk by it every day and not ever pay attention to what just happened. I don't know why that has always stuck in my mind as a sort of a, you know, like you don't see the recognition of anything. It's just a repair, right? It's just somebody fixed a hole, right? No, but no big deal. But what's involved in that is pretty, you know, it's pretty intensive. I mean, it takes more. It takes a little bit of work to do that, you know, so... Like I said, I don't know why it just always stuck in my head as one of them things of like, you know, nobody would ever know that uh, anybody put any time or effort into making that look like something was never there. Instead of making it look like, you know, there's a billboard around it. And, hey, look at me. Look what I've done. Look at, look at all this. Instead, it's the exact opposite. It's like... You go and do your work every single day, and nobody ever, ever sees the amount of creativity and problem solving that was involved in fixing that, you know? It just always intrigued me. <laughs> but that's one thing I love to do is explore my ideas and, you know, even start to think about these things in this certain way is kind of cool for me because I, I won't be scared to try anything I will try anything on stage I will try anything anywhere and see if it works and if it works cool and if it doesn't well cool we'll, we'll try something else different next time and that has gotten me <laughs> where people think I might be a little bit eccentric uh, would be a probably an understatement <laughs> Uh, where people kind of look at me like, where did this come from, you know? But, 
you gotta try it, right? You just got to try it. Just to see. Another creative way would be using what you have to get the end result that you want. So let's say you have an idea, right? I have an idea for a song. I have my acoustic guitar and I'm sitting on the couch writing a song. What do I need to write the song? I need my guitar, my brain, a pen, and a piece of paper. And that's it. And then I can write the song and work it all out in my head. What would be the next step? Well, the next step would be how can I record this song? You know? And you could go as simple as just turning on your phone and playing and singing it. You know? I hear a lot of people, you know, say, well, I don't have this or I don't have that, so I can't execute the idea. And the bottom line is, sure you can. You just have to figure out what the minimal things you need to be able to do it. Rather than looking at, oh, well, if I had this or if I had that, then it would be brilliant. Well, just take it one little step at a time. How can I make this? How can I make this happen? I got an idea for a song. I turn my phone on. I record it. And hey, you know what? That is the seed of an idea, right? That is the beginning of the idea. And it could be brilliant. And maybe it's not. But at least you've got the idea out in the tangible world now. It's not just up in your head, but it's out in the world. And you can always build on that. You can always build on that and make it better. Always make it better. But if you don't ever get from the idea in your head to out in the tangible world, nobody will ever know about it. And then it'll just disappear when you disappear, you know? So I try to just think about what I can do, how I can make the minimal things happen when I have the idea you know like the idea for this podcast I am recording with GarageBand I don't have a bunch of recording experience the last time I recorded was uh, with Pro Tools in 2004 so what I did is I bought a used Mac computer on Marketplace for 200 bucks and I got me a super nice interface for another 200 bucks and I'm using GarageBand Of course it could be better, and of course I want it to be better. And when I get to that point to reinvest more, then that's what I'll do. But until then, I at least got my idea of this podcast out into the world, right? Like it's out there, and it's not perfect, but it's me executing the seed of the idea. Well, what if I talk on a podcast? What what would happen if I did that? Well, I don't know. Let's try it. Let's try it and see. So, we can always figure out if you have an idea that, that is really, really on your mind. Figure out a way to make it happen. You know, even if it's just to build it yourself, you know. And that may be something that your grandkids would say, you know, my grandpa built this when when he was my age. You know, that sort of thing. You know, instead of just buying something to throw it away or working working overtime to buy something that's just going to break, you know. I'd much rather take the afternoon off and learn how to make something than I would volunteer to work a second job so that I would have to go buy something. You know? But that's just me. I just I just think it's a much better way to spend my time than to spend it slaving somewhere just to buy something that I will not appreciate as much as what I just made. So, what's your creative process? Do you think you're a creative person? Do you think you have these ideas that you want to get out into the world, but you just don't know how to, to make that first step? I am really curious to know. I'd really love to know about how you all see that whole process too. I am offering guitar lessons online. If 
you're curious or interested, please feel free to send me an email. Or you can reach out to me on one of my social media accounts. I hope you all enjoyed this as much as I did. I had a lot of fun talking about this. I really did. And uh, I hope you all have a blessed week. And please, if you are enjoying this stuff, just uh, keep listening. Because I'm going to come up with some more ideas and hopefully do some interviews. And uh, have some uh, fun with this podcast. Thank you very much.